Hello, welcome to my latest video. I'm going to be painting on stretched canvas again. This one's about um, 16 by 12 inches. It's a bit of a crease on the bottom right hand corner. That's my um, palette, it's just a plastic tub. It's got a lid on the top, stops the paint from drying out. Yeah, I think that cr crease on the bottom right is just caused by uh, me fixing the canvas onto the easel a bit tightly, causing the wood to bend a bit, but never mind. So I'll just establish a quick horizon. Yeah, if I don't fix the canvas on tightly, it tends to fall off. So I do get a bit overexcited with uh, waving my hairy stick about. Yeah, it's just a bit of Payne's grey and sap green. Turning the brush as I go. Yeah, um, I was thinking the other day about some of the silly stuff I've done in the past. Um, there was one time I used to do a spot of gardening for an elderly man who was actually an author. I'm not going to mention his name for confidentiality, but uh, yeah, he was he was an author. He was an amazing man, such a character, and because uh, he was an author, sometimes he'd have the BBC round an interview on BBC Breakfast or whatever it is and uh, there's one time all the you know there's a great big chuck outside his house with BBC written on it and all the rest so I, I got on with some uh, gardening and all that kind of thing and yeah it used to leave me to it and uh, yeah, I'd occasionally he'd, he'd yell, John, and I'd go up and see him. And it, he, he was a very fiery man. You know, you didn't want to upset him. And he'd yell, John, you think, oh, God, here we go. You know, he was fantastic. I really got on with him. But uh, some people didn't, as it could be quite difficult at times with some people. But he was always, uh, always very kind with me. But uh, yeah, this one time he shouted and went up to his house and uh, he handed me a parcel, a, a book shaped parcel and I opened it and he'd signed it and it, it was it was one, he'd only just released so I was like the, the first person to get his book and oh, it was a great moment, very uh, very moving And uh, yeah, there's one time, yeah, I digress a bit, there was this BBC truck outside, so got on with the gardening, and uh, he used to be interviewed by the BBC in front of this huge window that overlooked his fields and the garden, and I'd be there pottering about in the background, and uh, I was doing some burning, and um, I... Uh, you know, climbed over this wall and just started lighting this bloody big bonfire at the back of his house with this window overlooking. And, um, I, oh, stupid of me thinking about it now. It's a stupid thing to do. But I got, um, some petrol and poured it on the fire. You know, it, it wasn't lit, and obviously poured it on just to give it some warmth. And uh, got my matches and lit the bugger. An enormous fireball. It just, yeah, flash hit me. And just a wall of heat. And I was actually on fire. So, uh, yeah, I, I dropped and rolled about this field. And what m must have been just literally a second or so it, it felt like a lifetime and i was rolling and rolling and rolling and i could see sky 
gas fire, sky gas fire, sky gas fire, as I was rolling about, and it, it, I managed to get it out, and I just lying on the floor for a while, collecting my thoughts, getting my breath back, and um, my, I was wearing a fleece, and that had burned right the way through. And I'd, I'd check my hands over and everything, make sure I was okay. It was just a you know, flash injuries up my arms and my hands. Very lucky. I thought, you know, I could have easily just burned there and no one would have known. But anyway, um, I went home. I didn't want to disturb him doing the BBC stuff. And yeah, the, I, mean, the, I got home, the pain hit me. It was shocking. And I kept the fleece for a while. You know, me, me hair had pretty much gone and my eyebrows had gone and didn't need to shave for a couple of weeks because that was all gone. And, uh, yeah, I kept my fleece as a reminder and I called it Bernard. I carried on wearing it for a bit. But my wife threw it away. She didn't want me wearing it. But, um, yeah, I had visions of... Uh, <coughs> The author being on uh, BBC Breakfast, being filmed with the window behind him, and me in the background in the field rolling about on fire. God, that was scary. Yeah, silly, silly thing to do. So yeah, don't do it. Yeah, already. What is it? Nearly seven minutes in. And we have a painting. Just adding a bit more drama into that sky. In the sky also, I'd, I picked up a bit of yellow by accident off the foreground there. It's, uh, it's working quite well in the sky. I'm just going to put some more white down here. Yeah, it's... Uh, Coming on nicely. Yeah, oh, my life's just a catalogue of incidents like that, but uh, I've never really broken a bone. I'll find, I'll touch wood, you know. Never broken a bone, but apart from, you know, a few videos back, I spoke about a time when I dropped a rock on me head when I was building a tree house. Um, yeah, I can't ever remember breaking a bone. I've probably broken fingers and toes without realising. Because, yeah, you can break them without knowing. Just uh, pick a hair off. It's quite effective, that sky. I quite like that. It's quite interesting, the top part. I might pretty much leave that as it is. Yeah, do all that dramatic skies. You can imagine uh, you know, the likes of Turner and his stormy skies. He probably will ugh, put my teeth in. Probably worked frantically. Plenty of movement in the sky. Yeah, I quite like that. It's not not perfect, but it's a painting. It'll do me. I'm enjoying doing it. That's the most important thing. Let's put a bit of titanium white in the sky. I'm not going to do much more to that. It doesn't look too bad. Yeah, 
Yeah, there's, uh, you know, being on fire like that, there's, you know, there's no pain that I can think of that's like it. I mean, I don't know about childbirth, I've never had a child. But, uh, yeah, it was always oh, horrific all over your body. It was all right at the time, I was too busy trying to put the fire out, it was just after. Uh, one other time I felt incredible pain was uh, when I was at primary school in the we had this little yard which we played football in and all that business and it was a um, not like tarmac I suppose or concrete or whatever it was or gravel and uh we we were playing footy and it, it was around the time it's funny what you remember it was around the time of live aid so i guess it was about 1986 85 whenever live aid was and um there were these two uh dustbins these metal bins in the corner of the yard both with a uh, like a vulcanite lid on each one vulcanized rubber or whatever and uh, the ball was coming at me, and I was going to head it or do whatever. And I ran backwards and just toppled, and I landed on one of the bins, and my arse went through the bin. And my knee hit the bottom of my jaw at quite a high velocity, and uh, severed my tongue. And it, oh, it was absolutely hideous. And, you know, the blood, I can see the blood now on the playground. It was absolutely horrible. The pain was incredible. And uh, back then, I don't know if they do it now, but back then they didn't, um, they had no way of fixing tongues. You know, they didn't stitch them or anything like that. I suppose they, they can do things now about it, back then they couldn't. And uh, yeah, it was it was vile. Um, I had to uh, just be on soft food for weeks and ice cream. The, the pain was horrible. There was no pleasure eating ice cream and ice lollies without a mat pain. And uh, my mum said afterwards, you know, a while afterwards that. My tongue was literally hanging off. It was hanging on by a little lump of skin. And somehow it healed. Yeah. Oh, I still feel it now if I can think about it. It's so... It's vile. But yeah, whenever something happened in our village, it was absolute middle of nowhere. And... Yeah, it was miles away from any ambulances or anything like that. So we used to uh, be loaded into a car and then taken to the cottage hospital down in uh, Bakewell and was on Matlock, which uh, tended to be quicker than ambulances back then. Yeah, it ended up at the cottage hospital somewhere like that. Yes, I think... We have a painting. I'm not going to do too much. Just going to do finishing touches here. In the distance. We're almost there. It'll do for me. Yeah. Getting there nicely. I'm not going to do it to death. It's uh, knowing when to stop is the trick. If you paint every single day. You soon pick up the instinct of knowing when to finish. A few more highlights on. Pretty much using this blood brush as a palette knife. I have palette knives, but they'd be buried somewhere in the studio. Can't be bothered to get them out. Oh, could be some bushes and things there. Hedges, trees. Yeah, I think 
that is just about dandy. Yeah, quite pleased with that sky. Oh, just another hair there. Get rid of that. To cover up where I've been with the hair. Yeah, definitely just about dandy. It'll do for me. A few little uh, details, but then I think we're done. Nice and quick. The quickest painting is always my favourite. So yeah, thank you so much for watching. The job is a good one. So see you next time. Bye bye.